Well, family, I I just thank you all for being here this morning. I have a different way that the Holy Spirit was moving on me because I got like real good longtime friend. She's one of my longtime friends that's still alive, too. Because a lot of them are gone. And I thank God for her. I know she thanks God for my wife. They talk almost every day. And I thank God that she's sitting next to me in my office. And I thank God for my family online and even the ones, because the Sunday messages right now, they get a lot more views than I've ever had coming to church. And and I, I never know the numbers overseas or who's listening, who isn't, but I've gotten quite a few comments a lot over the last few weeks. So that's what keeps me going. But you know what really keeps me going? Turn with me right now. And I, I pray everybody that follows along with me today, because I'm going to do this a little differently, because we have been studying together, like Paul said, Ernie, Jay. Jay's been here since he retired. You know, and Jay's here. If I want to take a week off, Jay's got no problem stepping up to the plate. And man, when Tara said that to me, I said, here, out of the mouth of, of my sister, she said, Ernie, you know, it's okay. God will, that's why I played that song, God will make a way when there seems to be no way. That song's for all of us. And the teaching today, I'm going to keep it straight up with scripture. It's for all of us, including the landing. So it's going to be more scripture, this, this teaching today, than me. Because, you know, the one sister wrote, man, great message last week. So I said, what was so great about it? It was Holy Spirit filled. And if you're a lukewarm Christian, it's Holy Spirit messages that bring conviction upon people. Well, today, God's our hiding place. And the, the first thing I want you to do is turn with me to Psalm 139. And, you know, it's kudos to the Holy Spirit because we all know the Bible. Most of us here have read all the Psalms. Proverbs, or the whole Bible, very few. And the few that have, don't feel bad. There was a time when I didn't read the Bible until I got born again. But now that you're involved in, you, when you get this far in a ministry, and you get in with a bunch of people that are radically saved and talking about Jesus, get used to it. We talk about Jesus every day. Why? Because we're going to be with him forever. So here's David. In Psalm 139, and I pray you, you receive this word from God. O Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. That's powerful right there. Because God knows. He created us. He knows every part of us, every atom. He knows what we think. Because his ways and our ways, I tell you all the time, even myself, I got to praise God every day for my breath. He says, thou knowest my down sitting and my uprising. That means he's, he's here. He's with you right now where you are. He's right there with Patty. He's with my wife. He's everywhere because he's a spirit. And all things were created by him and for him. And David was realizing this. And what was David? We all know he was a sinner after. He was a sinner? Of course he was. And God loved him. And this is David talking to God here in the Old Testament. Thou understandest my thought afar off. Thou compassest my path and my lying down and art acquainted with all my ways. So there's nothing we can hide. That's why at the end, uh, you are my hiding place. Because when everything else fails in our lives, you got Jesus. When, when Ryan prayed, he was praying to God. We were agreeing. When Deanne was praying, she needed 
something done and God made a way. That's why I put that song in there. Don't doubt God's word, brothers and sisters. That's where faith comes in. When you read these scriptures, put yourself sitting there with David as he's bringing forth the word of God to us. It's the same thing you'll see later on with the apostle Paul. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, that knowest it all together. That's where he knows what we're going to ask for before we open our mouths and roll with what we want. Pretty amazing. Because I really zeroed this in. And I didn't know she was going to sit up here with me. We were going to the church. And in the middle of the night, God changed my direction. And then Tara helped change me in the afternoon yesterday. Because that's how God works. A multitude of counselors, iron, sharpening iron. And then there's people that really bum us out and we don't want to be around them. And Ernie always reminds me that, hey, we still got to pray for them. And, and that's important, too, because you're going to hear some of that in the Word of God today. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. This is David speaking. It is high, I cannot attain it. Whither shall I go from the, thy spirit? He said, David's going to God. Where can I go? I don't want to be apart from your spirit and thy presence, because God is omnipresent. That's who you and I serve. That's who died in Calvary for us. And all you got to do is believe it. Everyone should be smiling every day because you know who the word is. It's Jesus Christ in the flesh. David said, whether I go from the spirit or whether I flee from my presence. And in the King James, he's got a question mark there. Even if I ascended into heaven, thou art there. How about this? Even if I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. That's why softly and gently, Jesus is calling. You can't escape this. Every one of us belong to him. It's either you fall in love with Jesus, the word of God, or he chastises you because he still loves you. You know, it, it, it's so good. It says, if he made his bed in hell, he says, you're there, because God's everywhere. You have to realize who God is. And when you start to realize who Jesus Christ is, you begin to walk in the spirit. You begin to read this book differently. You begin to understand what the folly of what and the mischief and everything we've been listening to in Proverbs for the last couple of weeks that it's just the enemy operating within people. It goes on here. It says, if I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. He never lets go, people. You put your faith and trust in God, you'll always end up landing on your feet. You might think everything is lost, and God opens another door. And, and you'll understand that more when I get into the gospel today. But if I say, surely the darkness shall cover me, even the night shall be light about me. You know, so many times when it's light out because of the moon, I always reflect on how good God is. Because God created everything. I even have compassion when most people don't have compassion lately, because it's part of God's creation. You know? He says here, yea, the darkness hide it not from thee, but the night shall shine as a day. The darkness and the light are both alike to thee, for thou hast possessed, and he says here, my reins. In other words, every inner part that God created God is possessing 
when you open the door and let him in. That's why I always tell people you can call upon the Lord and say, the Lord is my strength. When you're weak, like the Apostle Paul taught the Corinthian church, well, we're to teach everybody the word of God. You're the temple today. You got to be that light to a world that the devil is trying to control. And it, it's getting deeper. Some of the stuff I'm learning going on YouTube from other brothers and other men of God, it's amazing how they're putting things out of the scriptures and it's real time right now. And yeah, we are in a time that's very sad and, and, and we're crying out to God for mercy. I believe God's going to give an extension just like he did in the Bible to everybody else because he's God. We have the ministering angels that minister for us. They're the ones that make these things happen. We don't understand it, but we're going to just trust in the Lord, not lean on our own understanding, and give him glory and praise only because he inhabits the praise of his people. When you're feeling down, start singing. I was singing the whole time I was playing the music today. Yeah, when we're all together somewhere, you're going to hear everybody singing. We know that. But when you're on the internet and it's a time slow, you can't harmonize. It sounds horrible. I get it. But listen to what it says here. It says, I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's your body. That's what God did for you and I. And he gave us the opportunity to, to have a wife or a wife have a husband. And, and if you don't have, then you got to be in fellowship with someone because everybody needs a friend. You don't need a lot of friends, but you need someone that you can fellowship with. And, and as we're learning in Proverbs, you can't fellowship and be in union with darkness because there is no fellowship in darkness. And we have to be careful. There's warnings and everything else in God's word. But he says, I will praise thee for I'm fearfully and wonderfully made, marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret, listen to what it says here, verse 15, and curiously wrought in the lowest paces of the earth, thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written. That's amazing. When you think about the Lamb's book of life, and he's talking to David, and David's talking to him about it right here in this scripture this morning. And he says, which in con continuance were fashioned when as yet they were none of them. And then he says to God here, and you put yourself there. You can mimic your relationship with your best friend. How precious also are thy thoughts thoughts unto me, God. Oh, how great is the sum of them. That's what God cares about you. He cares about me. He cares about you representing him as an ambassador, as a New Testament saint, brothers and sisters. David was saying, I should count them. They are more in number than the saint. You hear this? More in number than the sand. I love the beach. I grew up on the beach. You go to the beach and try to count sand. You'll give up right away. Think about the world. Think about God's creation. Think about everything. I, I got to welcome my brother Bryce here. That is blowing me away looking at his face on my screen, but he's here. I haven't talked to Bryce in quite a while. So surely thou, here, listen to what he says here in verse 18. If I should count them, they are more in number than the sand. When I awake, when I awake, I'm still with thee. So you get up and praise the Lord every day. 
because he's in charge of our breath. There's nothing greater. We learned it the other day in Proverbs. Wise men and women win souls. Get out of the muck and mire that the devil's got you in. Start acknowledging him. And you'll have more friends than you can imagine once you lead people to Christ. And they get saved. And it's just like the testimony Mama Patty gave. She came all the way from Virginia to get deliverance. So don't tell me people don't come to people that have the gifts. Because they do. Pastor Worley had a ministry that people from all over the country and world went there. And there's very few ministries in the body of Christ that are really doing real deliverance. Real deliverance means you get set free. Yeah, you get, you'll always get tempted. But the devil can't own someone that belongs to God when you get up and praise him every day. When you resist the devil, the Bible says he has to flee. Mama Patty did the, the refusal prayer against evil spirits yesterday. She did it already today. Her life is changing. The more you put faith in God and in the word of God, your life is going to change, brothers and sisters. He says, if I should count them, right? They are more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with thee. Surely, surely thou will slay. Listen to what David's saying to God. You'll slay the wicked. Well, there's no weapon formed against you and I that can prosper. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. We wrestle against addictions and bondage and habits and darkness. And we get lured away by the rudiments of the world. Don't kid yourselves. Alcohol, drugs. God made perfect bodies, people. Sickness and disease comes in through the enemy's plan. God has always given us the power over all the power of the enemy. You choose who you're going to serve. You choose your weapons, and the weapons of our warfare are mighty. They're not carnal. Here, surely thou wilt slay the wicked, O Lord. Depart from me, therefore, ye bloody men. What did we learn in Proverbs? We're in Psalms right now on this. We learned the last couple of days in Psalms. Get rid of the foolish people in your life. You pray for them. You pray that God sends laborers. Sometimes you might not be the one that leads someone to Christ. I tell that to people all the time. And if you really tuned into the word of God, you know what to do already. You don't have to talk about it. Just do it. Here. Listen to what David said about people that hate God. Do not I hate them, O Lord, that hate thee? So how can you have fellowship with people that are not saved? You're there for one reason, to get them out of darkness and bring them into light, not join into their party. And I've seen Christians, many of them, fall in the temptations of hanging out with people that were ungodly. They became what they ate. The flesh is bad, people. There's no relationship with the spirit and the flesh. How many times do good men and good women of God preach it? And sometimes you just got to put them on the shelf and keep praying. Here. I am not, I grieve with those that rise against thee. Well, I got grieved a couple of days ago because the demons were calling me everything. It was wicked. You know what I did? I had to listen to God's word the other day. I blocked it. I'm not going to get it anymore. Somebody else has got to reach that person. I'll pray for him. I don't need to put up with that. He doesn't repent. He doesn't want to repent. Let someone else deal with it. He don't live in New Jersey. We've done everything to try to help people. You know what? 
If you're thirsty and hungry for the truth and you want to get out of that bondage, you'll get to people that'll help you because there's plenty of people around this country that are serving God right now in spirit and truth. That young man that I, I mentioned earlier, Jason brought into my life, I have to chat with him maybe this afternoon or tomorrow, you know, because when we start everything up, I want him to come and speak here in New Jersey because he's on fire for Jesus. You don't want lukewarm Christians. They're called lukewarm in the Bible because that's what they are. And a lot of Christians today are lukewarm. You wouldn't even know they were a Christian if you were out in public. That's right. So I hate them with a perfect hatred, David said. He doesn't say, oh, I love you, I love you. Give it a break. If they're not receiving the agape love, they don't know what love is yet. Maybe, maybe you got to turn them over for the devil so they get kicked around a little more. And, you know, people don't understand that. Jesus said in the word, in Corinthians, turn them over for the destruction of their flesh because nothing good dwells in the flesh so that the spirit may be saved. You go back and you really study scripture and rightly divide the word of God today, brothers and sisters. I got to keep moving here because I'm getting stuck in my preaching, you know. Search me, oh God. How many times do we say that to God? I say it to him every night. And when I wake up in the middle of the night, I say, search me, Lord. Scripture, David said, search me, oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Smoking cigarettes, drinking alcohol, getting high on drugs, fornicating, adultery. Remember, you... You, you commit adultery, even if you don't perform the act, when you look with your eyes. Everything I'm talking is in the word of God. And the women, women need to follow 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Men, you got to follow it too. There's no divorcing a Christian woman. There's deliverance. Because what God joins together, no man is to separate. Nobody's preaching it in the church because they don't have real deliverance in churches. My God. And see if there be any wicked way in me. That's why we have to examine ourselves. David was talking to God here. She confessed to her demon brought it up to her yesterday when we were doing deliverance on Patty, and she knows it. She opened, and I know her a long time. I'm knowing more things now than I ever knew before because of deliverance, people. I can look at this board and say that to all of you. I'm on screen. Maybe some of you got to get more closer to what I'm talking about here with Jesus Christ. But I'll leave that for another moment. Why? Because the word of God is the word of God. Lord, I cry out unto thee, make haste unto me. Give ear unto my voice when I cry unto thee. I'm just pulling out highlighted scripture in my Bible right now. Because that's what meditating on the word of God is. Blessed is the Lord, my strength, which teacheth my hands to war and my fingers to fight. Without the word of God, you can't go in the battle because you've got to declare the word of God. It is written to the enemy. It's the word of God. It's not you and I. It's faith in God's word that moves the mountains, the obstacles in our lives. Turn with me to Matthew. Let me see where I want to go. I'm going to take you into Matthew 10 real quick. I want to go to Romans today. I'm going to go to Matthew. Uh, I don't want to go there. Let me see. I'm going to go here. Let's go into Matthew for a minute. This is important. And, and the, the reason I'm going here today is for all of you. Even Bryce, who hasn't been in this prayer group in many months. I haven't seen him in many, many years. In fact, his own, his own brother told me, don't even pray for him. 
He doesn't want to repent. And I'll say that in front of all of you because it'll stand before Jesus Christ at Judgment Day. I've seen so many people go back to Reformed theology that have been in deliverance camps. The devil got back in, people. They're not believing the glory of God. They're not believing putting the word of God into action and seeing the confirmation and the results. Well, I'm sorry. I am a result of God's grace. I don't need anybody. I got Jesus. His grace is sufficient. And there's other people in here that got Jesus or they wouldn't be here. Here. The 12, beginning in verse 5, Matthew 10. These 12, these were the, the real apostles, the real disciples, not the ones we hear about today. The ones we hear about today are false. God is showing this more and more because they're not, they're not walking the way these guys did back here in Matthew. Here, these 12 sent forth, he commanded them, Jesus. Go not into the way of the Gentiles and into any city of the Samaritans. Enter ye not, but go to the lost sheep of Israel. And here's what the commission was. As ye go, preach. How are you going to preach if you don't know the word? Saying the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Verse 8. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers. Raise the dead. Cast out devils. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver, not brass in your purses, your money bags. So this is powerful, people, if you want to believe Jesus. Because this is, he gave us this commission. The moment you're born again. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. You will never be the same. Here. And it's the devil that stops you. No script for your journey, neither two coats, neither shoes, neither staves, for the workman is worthy of his meat. I can't tell you how many times people have taken care of me over my Christian walk. Mama Patty knew me when I was a baby Christian, two years old, and I was speaking it full gospel, I was casting out devils. It was in the book, and God had me a workman approved by God, a soldier in God's army. And I'm still doing the work. It's not about money. It's about obedience to God's word, brothers and sisters. And when you come into a house, salute it. And if the house be worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it's not worthy, let your peace return to you. And ooh, listen to the word, verse 14. And whosoever shall not, shall not receive you, nor hear your words, you're preaching the truth, the gospel. When you depart out of the house or city, shake off the dust off your feet. In other words, Walk away from these people. Verily, I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for that land than of Sodom and Gomorrah. And we pray every day because we don't want to see America destroyed like Sodom and Gomorrah was destroyed. And don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. I said it more than once. You vote the wrong way, you're part of the sin now. If you're a born-again believer. You cannot vote for abortion. You cannot vote for gender trans. God created, not man. And what God created has to stick. Not some idiot saying that a boy can be a girl and a girl can be a boy. Yeah, amen. Right. <clears throat> Behold, I send you forth. That's us, brothers and sisters, as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. In other words, be innocent around people. You could be gentle. You don't have to be a madman like Brother Charlie here sometimes. <laughs> but sometimes tough love 
gets the job finished. Here. But beware of men, for they will deliver you up to councils. They will scourge you in their synagogues. That means talk dirt about you in their churches. You, you really got to get into what God is trying to teach us in a generation that's so polluted, brothers and sisters. Churches that are so polluted. I'm reading to you Jesus' commandment to give us authority and power and has nothing to do with finances and money. Because he says the workmen will be taken care of. The miracles alone. I've never had to beg for a penny. I didn't have to pay a penny. I didn't have to ask anybody to support what I'm doing. The Holy Spirit leads. The Holy Spirit brings people. And I'm praising God every day, not once a week, twice a week. Every day. And we're leading people to the Lord. That's the Great Commission, people. You don't need buildings to do it. Everybody should be ashamed of themselves for gathering in a building. And 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 the buildings, if you go around America, there's a lot of empty churches, dead churches now, because God's not in a lot of people anymore. That's right. We are a minority in America right now crying out for this country for mercy, brothers and sisters. You shall be brought before governors and kings for a testimony against them. Well, I'm talking against the government right now, real time. You know why? Because if they kill me, absent from the body is present. I'm going home. I'm short timing already. I'm not worried about death. There's no fear when you know the truth that you're born again, you're saved. Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior. And the moment the flesh drops, the spirit goes to the Lord. You don't go to purgatory. If you're born again and you put your faith in Jesus Christ, you're saved. Saved person never has that discussion with people that say they you can lose your salvation. We know better, it's demons. We've been in the ministry long enough to pass the ammunition. Tell people to pray and fast, and let's see what happens when you spend a week of fasting. And you really get real with your walk in the spirit with God. Some of the people that accuse me, I'd love to get them in a, a building for a week. Most of them can't fast seven days on water only. It's amazing. And he, he tells us here, when they deliver us up, don't think about what you're going to speak, what is given, because you got living water. I don't need a Bible to talk Jesus. He's in my heart, brothers and sisters. I told Mama Patty, I said, you keep re -re reading that refusal prayer every day. And before you know it, you'll just be speaking it from your heart. Does it have to be a rope prayer? No. I did the warfare prayer to say, in the beginning here, simple. We bound the Antichrist spirits. We loose the angels. God already knows before I spoke it what he's got to do for each and every one of us today. If you are seeking God diligently, he rewards you. And if you're not, shame on you because you're going to get a lot of trouble coming your way. We learned that in Proverbs 13 and 14. 12 and 11. Go back and read Proverbs a few times. How do you think I learned faith in the word of God? I put Jesus first in my life. I told Mama Patty that many times lately. She, she's known me for a long time. I'm still the same crazy maniac I was 39 years ago, people. <laughs> I'm still talking. My kids know that. Here. You're a maniac for the Lord. Yeah, maniac for the Lord. And, and I just want to go to this scripture because I love my highlighted stuff. Verse 32 and 33 says it all in chapter 10 of Matthew. And this is what we're all supposed to be, his ambassadors. Whosoever therefore shall confess me before man, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. 
But whosoever denies me before man, I will deny him before my Father in heaven. So if you don't got Jesus, you ain't going nowhere. Mm -hmm. Okay? I don't care what religion. I don't care if they're United Methodist. Listen, my Bible says perversion, they're not in. Liars, they're not in. Because you don't continue to lie when you're born again. You get Holy Ghost convicted because you're sealed by the Holy Ghost. You're dealing with God. You cry out to God to save you people. He's going to save you. And when you're saved, you belong to him. He shed his blood. You think God's going to allow something he threw out of heaven to take you away from him? When he, got, he, he chastised you enough to wake up and realize that he was God? That's the problem with Christians. Doubt and unbelief. I spoke to Steve a lot about that yesterday. Go with me over to, uh, oh, let's go to Romans. I could go all over the place with this right now, but I want to go to Romans. Why? It's the systematic theology of the New Testament. It's the go-to book when you want to really get people seriously involved in the new testament and why we're saved by grace paul was a servant he was also pharisee we all know that he was a servant of jesus christ he was called an apostle he was celebrate not celebrated he was separated for the gospel and and i mean look at god took someone that was killing murdering doing every kind of thing God detests. And he says, I'm going to change him in a heartbeat, just like he did me, just like he did everybody else here right now. You know, it says here in the word, which he had promised for his prophets in the Holy Scriptures concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Do you honestly, honestly love Jesus Christ? your Lord. I do. I sing that song all the time, you know, falling in love with Jesus. When I wake up in the morning, give me Jesus. Patty's here at my home. I left her and Sharon early this morning to come up here and ask God, which scripture should I talk about today? Boy, did he give me a boatload. Okay. Concerning his son, Jesus Christ, who was made of the seed of David, according to the flesh. What does that tell you and I? You know why I started in Psalms? I did that for Patty, but David was acknowledging God, Jesus, what God's attributes were in Psalm 139. He's omnipresent, people. When you think you're you're doing your sins, your, your private sins, your sexual sins, or your ungodly appetites. You don't think God is watching you? Then you're missing a boat on spirit and truth. And declared to be the son of God with power, according to the scriptures, according to the spirit of holiness. This is Paul. The very first, I don't even have to go any further than Romans today. It'll give me a, a jump start for my next message. By the resurrection from the dead, you got to believe this, that he's risen. Even the Orthodox believe that. And there's some good Orthodox people. There's some good Mennonite people. At least the Mennonite women still understand the head covering. You can't get the American choice church to embrace it. And us in deliverance, we know the truth. And I knew that before I ever, ever went to a deliverance church because I put it into action when I was a baby Christian and I read it in the scriptures. And I said to myself, when I was a little boy, people were wearing head coverings in all the denominations. Then all of a sudden it stopped. And it stopped in the 60s, people. So did, yeah. so did prayer in the school. 
there was a real big change in the 60s. You know, I've lived long enough to recognize that. But whom we have received grace and the apostleship. We already got the teachings from God's apostles. They're in the book, people. The only thing different in latter times is false apostles. That's in the book. That would make you really, really inspect and dissect what these men are teaching. And today we got women apostles now. Another joke. Because if God wanted women as apostles, he wouldn't call them the weaker vessel. He wouldn't have made man the spiritual head of the home. You got to really dig into the scriptures and, and look at God's heart and his opinion. You know, none of these new age or modern Christians, they, they'll shoot me with a machine gun if they could. Because a lot of them are doing it for money. And when you're doing it for the wrong reasons, you've got the enemy counterfeiting the gifts of God. And be careful with what you listen to and what you watch and be part of. I did a teaching last week. Go back and listen to it. For obedience to the faith among all nations in what? His name. Among whom you are also called of Jesus Christ which means called, we're chosen. We're chosen. Every one of us belongs to Jesus Christ when we cry out and say to God who created everything, I need you. I can't tell you the tears and the way I was acting like a little baby boy and I was a full-grown man, okay? For all that be in Rome, beloved of God, call to be saints. You didn't have to be special to be called a saint. It's just everyone that beloved of God, that believed in Jesus Christ. Paul said, grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ, because you can't separate them. Paul knew that. You know, sometimes you need a Damascus experience with Jesus to wake up and know the truth. First, I thank my God, through Jesus Christ, for you all, this is Paul speaking, that your faith is spoken throughout the whole world. Whole world! There's more people in the world now than ever before, and there's a lot more people that have never heard the gospel because it's been quenched in a lot of countries. For God is my witness whom I serve with my spirit. See how you got to serve him? With my spirit in the gospel of his son, that without ceasing, I make mention of you always in my prayers. So he was a man after God's own heart, just like David. He was praying all the time for everybody God was bringing into his life. That's why my house shall be called the house of prayer for all people. Going back, making request, if by any means now at length, I might have prosperous journey by the will of God to come unto you. So everything we do, that's why the Our Father is such a great prayer. That we, we, want, we want forgiveness and we want to do God's will. As it is in heaven, let it be in our lives here down on earth. What is God's will? You know what Steve said to me yesterday? It is God's will for all men to be saved. And when you talk in men, it means men and women. Because the woman is part of the man. God took the rib out of Adam. He took part of Adam's body to create woman. And that's when he gave Adam the spiritual authority. Go back and read Genesis. You'll understand that if you, you believe God's word. For I long to see you that I might impart unto you some spiritual gift. That's powerful. He was a real apostle. And, and you know what? There's a lot of not real apostles, and they're not imparting the gifts of the Holy Spirit sometimes. And they're being called out all day long throughout Christianity, even on YouTube. If you've never been on YouTube, go up there and, and look at the pro and cons that are going on. The only way you're going to learn the truth is through this book. You don't need man to teach you. You need God, the power of the Holy Spirit, 
guiding you and showing you who the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit is. Okay? Now I would, he says, that is my comforted together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. I finally got answered prayer. And Chris LaSala is in the right fold, finally. But it, it's taken a lot of years of praying, people, and fasting. Because if you're really a disciple of God, you're going to fast. It's between you and God, and it's in private. Read your Bibles. He says here in 13, Now I would not have you ignorant, brethren, that oftentimes I purpose to come to you, but was led hither, uh, hither there too. In other words, he he was uh, hindered in his travels, that I might have some fruit among you, also even as among our Gentiles. And that's why I'm excited right now. When I get my heart into a gloomy place, it's God that opens up a door and shows me, I got you, you're doing okay. And when I got those invitations, I said, oh, wow, you know? And when I got people saying thank you to me that I don't even know, that's God. He's building the ministry, not Charlie. I like to play with my dogs, SJ. I'm very comfortable. I tell all you people that. I'm okay just sitting here every day doing a prayer group. And if someone wants to be the pastor of a ministry, I'll help them. When you get older, I just want to serve God. I want to be the a man of wisdom that passes it on to the younger people. Like Ernie always says, we try to give a younger person the opportunity to get into the prayer group, to be able to speak Jesus, to be able to teach, to be able to be part of something God's doing with all of us. That's what the body of Christ is all about. And Paul wrote here that I might have some fruit among you also even as among other Gentiles. And he says, I am a debtor both to the Greeks and to the barbarians. He was, he, he was laying down for everybody to bring the gospel. Uh, there's no condemnation. I, I preach there's no condemnation. Please don't think, but we're all supposed to be preaching the gospel. We're all supposed to be winning souls both to the wise and to the unwise. So as much in me as I am ready to preach the gospel to you that are in Rome also. So, and Rome wasn't in Catholicism yet. Catholicism didn't come about till 324. This is the beginning, the church people. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that what? That believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Cross-reference it with Habakkuk, chapter 2, verse 4. For therein is the righteousness of God revealed, and listen how God's righteousness is revealed, from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. So if you believe in God and you're part of the just, you're going to walk with the king. That means you're going to walk in God's word. Don't think God don't know who's walking and who isn't. You can talk to talk, but if you're not walking the walk, you're going to be exposed. Okay? For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness. I wouldn't want to be that person. Because that which be known of God manifest in them, for God had showed it unto them. And listen to what it says here. Because I got a, I got a few more verses to go here. You know? It's not, it's not the dirty dozen. It's the truth of the word. It says, because that which we know of God is manifest in them, for God had showed it unto them. Why? Because the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen being understood by the things that are made if his eternal power and godhead so they ate they are with out any excuse that's why i always tell you guys put the word of god into action and you'll see god's glory because 
that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish hearts. And Proverbs told us that. Get away from all these foolish people. If you're reading the word of God and you're trusting and obeying God's word, you're going to recognize the enemy that's operating in the wolves and sheep's clothing. It's that simple. And the only, no one, of, not one of us has an excuse today because the Bible is open for everyone in America. It, look, my teachings are going over to Africa. I've never been to Africa. It's not a place I want to go to, but if God tells me I got to go somewhere and I know it's God, I'm gone. My wife knows that too. It's where your heart is. And if you have faith in Christ, I said that to Howard Pittman when we were younger, and I used to have conversations with Howard, not only on the phone, but live and in color. Wherefore, God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies with themselves. Oh, that's what's going on today in our world, brothers and sisters, who changed the truth of God into a lie and worshiped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. For this cause. Listen to what the word's teaching us today. For this cause, God gave them up unto vile affections. That's pretty powerful, the verbiage here. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is not of nature. In other words, sleeping with another woman. It's not going to multiply and produce people. And likewise, also the men having the natural uh, leaving the natural use of the woman burned in their lust toward another man. Men with men working that which is unseemingly and receiving in themselves the recompense of the era which was me. Now, why ain't someone saying this to the woman that's trying to run for president of the United States or the vice president? that's running that clown, he's allowing people's children to be taken away and transgendered. Now, I mean, this is strong verbiage here, people. Somebody's got to preach it. Well, I guess they're going to, like they try to shoot Trump, they're going to try to shoot me one of these days. It makes my homecoming even better. All right? And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to what? A reprobate mind. Okay? Do you really understand this? To those things which are not convenient. In other words, not proper, not good. Being filled with what? Unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, and whispers. Whispers is another word for gossipers. I mean, I, I was almost tempted in the middle of the night to surprise you with gossip, lies, and slander, because I really got to get that one out there so people can hear a great teaching. But they're Biters. He's describing what these people are like, brothers and sisters. So if you really want to hit it hard on people you're ministering to, get into the book of Romans. You don't, if you don't have the, the courage to go through the whole thing in first chapter, go from 17 on and go slow with them. Make them read it, especially people that are involved in those sins. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to their parents. I've seen a lot of young people turn to homosexuality in both boys and girls because they were disobedient to their parents. And I could, I could give you another teacher, and I'll do that maybe next week, 
or the week after, because maybe I'll allow someone to bump me next week to give me a break. But God warns us even about our family members. He also warns about disobedient children. Without understanding. And why don't children have understanding? Because the man is not doing the spiritual headship that he's been called to. I'm not going to push the blame on the women, but it goes both ways. You know, I had my wife and my sister correcting me yesterday because I talk about this to all people. This is God's business, the word of God. You are representatives of Jesus Christ and the kingdom of God. You're supposed to be talking to darkness about these things every time you're sent out. You're on a divine appointment. Whether you choose to acknowledge him or not acknowledge him, it's on you. It's not on me. When you do your part, God does his part. Let me finish this and close. Without natural, listen to what it says here in 31 at the end. Without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. And the last verse that I'm going to read today. Who knowing the judgment of God. Now, come on. He destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah, people. That's God's heart. God's the creator king. If you want to disobey God, then you're going to suffer the consequence of that disobedience. And contrary to God's word, when you're disobeying, you don't have the fear of the Lord. That's the beginning of wisdom. Because Jesus Christ got the power to throw anyone into the lake of fire. I told you that when I said, whosoever doesn't acknowledge him. And I've, I've helped set homosexuals free. It was demons in it. I got to spoke on, I got to speak to demons and homosexuals for six solid hours. And my testimony will stand at judgment day. So I'm not I'm not worried about dying because it's a sin. It's an abomination to God. And the world doesn't believe, so they don't see the glory. Most of the church today, especially the ones that like, look at T.D. Jakes, another horror story. How many people has he deceived? Even his own people are chagrined. Let me finish. I'm going to read it at 32. I, I won't preach. Who, knowing the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death. Not only do they this, do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. And that's what God gave me to talk about today, Sunday. And I pray someone out there hears this message. Even if you know people that are on their way to the lake of fire, share the message. We're all instruments for God's glory. And, and God bless you guys for listening to this teaching today. And may the Lord bless you, may his light shine upon you, and keep you in all things that you do. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you.